guys, it's Alicia and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another bookshelf. <sighs> it makes my heart happy. I will never run out of places to film. Today I'm going to be doing a recent reads video. So I'm going to briefly recap the books that I've read so far this year. Kind of like a quarterly checkup. And also I'm going to wrap up the books that my sister picked for me in the month of April. So here we go. I started the year off with was To Steal a Heart by Jen Toronto and this is book one in her new uh, Bleecker Street Inquiry Agency series. Book two comes out later on this year and I'm really excited about that one but we got introduced to a new cast of characters and I liked it. I think I ended up rating it a four out of five star. It was not my favorite by Jen by any means of the word but I did really enjoy it. I really enjoyed the main guy character, Nicholas. Nicholas and Gabriella were orphans that grew up together swindling people and they were thieves and they would like pickpocket, stuff like that. And Nicholas was taken by a well-to-do man who wanted to do an experiment, I should say a social experiment, to see if he could reform a street urchin, essentially. Uh, and Gabriella was left on her own and they both went separate ways and then find each other again and I love that trope because they were childhood best friends and then they found each other again and then they turned into more and they got together and happily ever after and they started an inquiry agency that's all women uh, and based out of a boarding house she lives at a boarding house now Anyways, it was super, super cute. It was really fast-paced, um, but I read Jen's books really fast, so I don't know if it was just me or if the book was just written really fast. I can, can't really tell, but I really enjoyed it, and I'm really looking forward to the next one. The next girl um, character seems like she's going to be really quirky, and I'm excited about it. The next one that I read was The Matchmaker's Rogue by Regina Scott. Uh, I rated this one a 3.5 out of 5 star. It took me quite a few tries to try to get through this book. It took me a while to even read it. Like four other books in the series are out now. This is book one in her Grace by the Sea series. It's her new Regency's indie published series that she just started releasing. I don't know why but I really struggled with this book with the characters. In my review I said there were a lot of moving parts in this story because again we're getting introduced to a new cast of characters, uh, a new world, and Regina always has a lot of characters in her indie books because she does a full series pretty much about every character, a book about every character. Um, so we were introduced to a wide range of them in this book and it's small so it was just a lot happening and I felt like things weren't really flushed out properly. I, I couldn't put my finger on what exactly but I just knew that there were too many wheels spinning and because it's a full series not enough things coming together to complete a picture. So I do have the second and third book on my TBR that I have to review and I will get the rest of the series just because I love Regina and I do want to finish it out. Uh, to see if any of the parts finally lock together and make sense. So that was that one. The next book I read, I actually started it in January but finished it off later in the couple months, was The Kissing Tree. It is a collection with four books from four beautiful authors, Regina Jennings, Karen Wittemeyer, Amanda Dykes, and Nicole Deese. And I enjoyed this collection so much. My review will be going live in the next couple days. Or next couple weeks I don't remember how I have it scheduled but it is a collection that spans time so it starts in it starts in 1868 and then ends in present time all revolving around this weeping willow that the town has dubbed the kissing tree and each story was absolutely beautiful I think my favorite was probably either Karen's or Amanda's both just touched my little heart 
I love novella collections, especially when they span one particular thing. For some, I just, I love them. I don't really know how to explain it. I just think that the size is great when you're kind of in a slump and you just want to read a story or you don't know what to read. Novellas are always the perfect thing to just dip your toes. And this collection was beautifully done and I loved it. I rated it a 4.5 out of 5 star overall as a book collection. You can read all my individual thoughts on my blog. Next I read Courting Misfortune by Regina Jennings and this one I believe I ended up changing my uh, my rating and I think I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 star. Um, originally I had it at a 4 but after I was writing my like sitting down and actually writing my review because Alicia is a procrastinator. Um, these books have been sitting on my shelf waiting to be reviewed since I finished them off in January and February. It's April, the end of April, and I just finally sat down and actually wrote the blog posts uh, and scheduled them. So Alicia's really bad at that. Once I was actually sitting down and writing my reviews, the things that bothered me about the book bothered me too much for me to give it a four. Um, so I dropped it down to a 3.5. I still really enjoyed the book. This again is a new book to a new series, The Joplin Chronicles. Um, new cast of characters, new place. We meet Callista and that's her name, right? Yeah, Callista in, what is the novella? Ah! In the Serving Up Love Harvey House collection that she just did. Um, we meet Callista. So I was really, really, really anxious for her story. I thought it would be fun. Unfortunately, I think I set my expectations too high because <laughs> it let me down. Um, Callista is a Pinkerton agent, but in the probation period, she's one of the first female, not one of the first because Pinkerton had hired other females, but she is in probation because she is a female, like her first job. So she sent to go find this girl and she sent to Joplin and her family's from there. So she runs into them and her family's like in her face and all over the place, which is fine, whatever. The family didn't bother me. What bothered me is that she was having to play this bad girl part because she was trying to find a girl who was said to be in brothels. So she was trying to like play this part, kind of. And then the guy main character was a preacher from the middle of nowhere that came to Joplin to reach the loss and they end up meeting and she couldn't tell him who she was so he was seeing her as a lost soul but he kept like having these weird like he was falling in love with her but he also knew that it would like an unequally yoked situation because he didn't know that she was a good Christian girl because she wasn't portraying herself to be that way because she couldn't because of her assignment. I just, I didn't like that because he knew that it was like wrong and it felt like a flirt to convert kind of thing. And I just, I didn't like that. Even though she's a Pinkerton agent, like she had a month to be on this case and it just didn't feel like she worked at all, which like made sense at the end because if she had tried, she would have found the girl. Like it was... I don't know. It was a cute love story. It just, the things that bothered me, bothered me enough that I like, struggled to get through some of it. But I read it fast. Like, I'll read the next book in the series. I'm excited about the next one in the series. Um, we're going to keep following this like, family. Um, and I loved the family aspects. The next book I have is Nothing Short of Wondrous by Regina Scott. And this is book two in her American Wonders series, or collection series that she's doing with Ravel. And this was around Yellowstone. So that's the national park that we were focused on this time. And this one I rated four out of five stars. It was cute. It was a really fast read, like over the weekend. Um, I enjoyed this cast of characters. It's based around a lady who owns a hotel in the middle of Yellowstone. And then a group of army men are sent in to kind of like set it up to see what would be the best route through or something like an expedition team, something like that. Anyways, it's a whole history thing that I'm not very good at, even though I love historical novels. 
ridiculous, I know. But I loved the army team. They just felt like a family. It was cute. There was chemistry. Not like jumping off the page chemistry. Overall, it was a cute story. Um, I liked it. I'm coming to find that I just don't know if I'm her, like, the biggest fan of her, like, westerny American type stuff. I really enjoy most of her Regency stuff. But it's, they're cute. They're, they're good, fast reads. If you've got nothing better to do. The next one I read was A Life When Streamed by Rachel Fordham. And unfortunately this one does not have a rating. I have yet to write my review for this one. I don't know if I'm going to write a review. No, scratch it. I'm going to write a review for this one. I have to. Because people do deserve the bad reviews as much as the good reviews. Um, it's my duty as a reviewer to review all the books. Even the ones that I did not enjoy. Um, I struggled with this one. First, it took me three tries to get into it. Um, I had to have a group of people that I was texting who'd already read the book so that I could talk about it. Um, I did not like the main character. There was like a, this weird wannabe love triangle that just wasn't flushed out properly. Um, there wasn't a reason for it. It the whole book just felt like fluff, essentially. It needed to go through maybe another year of like, like passes through an editor for me. I just, there was so much potential for this story. There really was. It, I was excited because it's a trope of like they were dating and then they broke up and then they got back together. And I, I enjoy that trope. This one was just not done very well. Um, it screamed Christy knockoff to me. Um, like the show, if you've ever watched the show Christy, um, it's like it screamed Christy show to me. And I don't know. I really struggle with it. I am having a hard time writing this review because I don't want to be mean. I don't want to be spiteful, but I know that I need to write the review um, because I, d I didn't enjoy the book. So I'm still working on how I'm going to write it. Um, but I adore this cover so much. I love this cover. I love Rachel. I really en I've enjoyed her other books. And I'm excited about her release this year. A Lady in Attendance. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, but this one just didn't make it for me. The next one I read is His Holiday Prayer by Tina Radcliffe. This is book three in the Heart of Oklahoma series. Um, I rated this a four out of five star. So far, it's been my favorite of this series that she's did that she did. It's about a veterinarian, two veterinarians actually. And the fun fact about me, I wanted to be a vet for a really long time. So anytime I get a story about vets, I get really really excited. Um, this one was cute because they were best friends for years. They went to vet school together and then went into business together, and had been with each other through pretty much every aspect of life from college forward. And it was just really fun. Um, it was a little unrealistic to me and the fact that the main girl character has a secret that she's hiding. She never told her best friend and for someone to be your best friend for that long and you've done everything together, like you've experienced so much together, for them not to know one of your secrets seemed a little weird to me and she'd never spent any time with his whole family. Like, no Thanksgiving, like Christmas, just going to their house and having, like, family dinner. Which, again, after 10 plus years, just didn't seem very realistic to me for how close they were saying they were. Um, and the whole family knew that they were best friends. So, I don't, it just, something about that just felt off to me. But, overall, it was really, really cute and I did enjoy it. The next book I have is Nicole by Sarah Monzen, and I gave this one 5 out of 5 stars. I really enjoyed this book. Um, out of the series so far, this is book 3 in her Sewing and SoCal series. And I think this one might be my favorite right now. I really enjoyed Nicole and how fun she was. She was a interesting character. <laughs> She's like a save the chubby unicorns, save the turtles, plastic kill. Not in an obnoxious way, at least for me while I was reading it, um, but I loved 
Drew, who's the main character here, we meet him and Molly in the first book. He is the main guy character's best friend. Um, and it was just fun to see them interact because he is a like nonchalant, no care in the world jokester and she's uptight, doesn't know the meaning of fun. And I don't know, they were just a fun pair to me. I had a really fun time reading it. I read it in the airport on my way to California and finished it while I was waiting for my plane. So, but what do I do next? <laughs> but I really, really enjoyed it and I'm excited for Amanda, which is the next book in the series. The next book that I read was Second Chance Christmas by Belle Renshaw and this is book three in her Winter Montana series. I gave this a four out of five stars. I really, really enjoyed this story. We finally got Troy, that's his name, right? Yes. We finally got Troy's story. He is the third Bradley brother and I just loved him and he falls in love with a young lady named Summer who I think we technically meet in book two but I didn't remember it so it's been a while since I read book two um but they were just a fun couple it was like based around a food truck and chefs and cooking and a a little bit of a competition and it was just a lot of fun I really enjoyed it um uh, personally my paperback copy could have gone through a couple more edits uh for like typos and such but that didn't take away from what was inside it was so sweet and that's easily easily fixed on the author's end as well it was so good I really liked it and I'm really looking forward to book four I found out uh, that there will be another book in the series at least so I'm really excited about that one and I really enjoyed it the next book that I read was Raising Honor by Jill Lynn and this is book four no, I lied. This is book five in her Colorado Colorado Groom series. And I was so excited about this book. It was about Charlie, who we met in book four. Yeah, we met her in book four. And I was really, really excited to read her story. Um, it took me a little bit to get into it, but overall I really did enjoy it. I rated it a four out of five star for the story that it was. It dealt with fostering and adoption and a family being put back together and it was a lot of fun. It was really, really sweet. Super cute. I really enjoyed the story and I'm looking forward to reading the next book. Alrighty, the last book that I read before I jumped into the books that my sister picked out for me was Vine for the Viscount by Christy Ann Hunter and I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 star. This is book one in her Hearts on the Heath series that she just started. So new cast of characters, kind of. One thing that's super fun about Christy's books is that they're all written in the same world and the same timeline so we get cameos from characters from her other series and I that makes me so incredibly happy. I love that we got to see Aaron he's from the Haven Manor series we got to see Trent Hawthorne who is from the Hawthorne House series and then we got introduced to a new cast of characters who is really really sweet and I'm really enjoying the series so far. I'm in the middle of book two at the moment and we'll probably finish it within the next hopefully day or so. This deals with horse racing. Before it came and like with the Kentucky Derby and everything this is its history and it's such a fun time to be in and something new to learn and I really loved the new set of characters um, in this book especially. Bianca and Hudson, they were just fun and I loved all the horsey things and I'm really excited about the new series. I liked it. And now we get into the April wrap up where my sister chose my TBR. I love my sister, I do. However, if she picks my TBR again, I think I'm gonna have a few more rules <laughs> about what she picked. So she picked out five books for me and as a recap, it was book one in the American Wonders series by Regina Scott, A Distance to Grand. Aiming for Love by Mary Keneally, which is book one in the Brides of Hope Mountain series. Over the Edge, which is book three in the Kincaid Brothers series by Mary Keneally. Kincaid Brides, not brothers. A Bride in the Bargain by Deanna Gist and Donna Emberwild by Sarah E. Ladd. Um, if you watch the video know that I've technically actually read two of them previously. I've already read A Distance to Grand and Aiming for Love and I said that I would reread them. However, <laughs> I didn't because I didn't really care for the stories. 
I've actually read A Distance to Grin twice and I didn't really care for it either time. Aiming for Love, um, I really, really, really didn't like. Um, and I didn't want to put myself in a reading slump. So I decided for my own personal reading health, I was not going to read them. And I'm glad that I didn't because I think I've decided that I'm probably not going to read many more of Mary Keneally's books. I think I'm going to take a break. We're on a break. Uh, I had a really hard time with Over the Edge. I did not read these two. Uh, so we're going to talk about the three that I did read. Over the Edge, Mary Keneally. Mm. <laughs> I don't even remember what I rated it. I don't think I rated it. Um, it was awful. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm trying to be as nice as I can. Um, nothing against the author. I loved Mary's work when I was younger. She is a tried and true author. She is great. She was great at her craft when I first got into CF. I just think that I myself has, have matured. Um, my reading cha my reading taste has changed. Um, and I just didn't enjoy this. I didn't enjoy the girl character at all. <laughs> she made me mad. Um, so Seth is the youngest Kincaid brother. He was in an accident when he was younger. And then he went to war and then he came back and he was like held captive for years or something like that. I don't know. So essentially something happens. He gets married while he's sick, like recovering from an injury in war and ends up having a baby with this girl and the girl is obnoxious. So she like goes to find him and the first thing she's like, I'm going to kill him. Like, he left me, blah, 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 because he just, like, got up one night and he left and he went home because he was mentally not all there. First of all, messed up from his first accident, messed up from the war, then he's kidnapped, so he, like, disappeared, so she's livid, whatever. All of a sudden, she finally finds him, she's recovering from the stagecoach, stagecoach accident, so much kissing for people who don't remember each other, or he doesn't remember her. And just always kissing each other and no substance the kid was obnoxious he's crying all the time and then he's like oh my baby blah blah, blah. then we get introduced to a new character with like a wrench thrown into it and uh, come to find out they got married two weeks after they met each other and the whole time he was delirious and out of it from the war injury so she's mad about nothing and she's like I'm not gonna ever leave him alone like he has to be in my sight all times because he's gonna leave me alone. it was done it was done I don't like it so the next one that I read was A Bride in the Bargain and after reading this I can 100% say that I've read it before pretty sure on ebook forever ago uh it was cute I don't remember what I rated it hold on let me get my actual rating I rated it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Um, it was a solid read. Deanna's a little um, kissy kissy too. That's something that I've said about her books before. This one was a little more toned down than other ones that I've read. Um, kind of. Uh, but essentially it was during the time that to get land like almost eight, 700 acres or something like that you had to be married. You could have 320 as a single person and 640 as a married couple. The thing is this guy was married when he went out. He got 640 acres of land. He built this huge like lumber thing. He's like massive on all of his land. And then his wife ended up passing away and never came out. So now there can like someone saying, well, he can only have 320. So now he's either having to prove that his wife passed away or he needs to get married again. He doesn't want to get married again, but he has to get married again because he can't prove his wife passed away because her death certificate was burned up in a fire. She actually did die. Don't worry. So then they did like the bride ships kind of. So this girl thinks that she's getting like coming to the state to be a cook. She doesn't want to be a bride. She refuses to get married because she thinks that everyone she's close to ever dies. Blah, blah, blah. It's all her fault. Blah, blah. So she goes over. She refuses to marry him. So he has like two weeks or a month or something like that to get her to marry him. And 
so she just cook. They, I don't know. It was okay. It's an okay book. Um, I stayed up and finished it in one sitting. It was super easy to read. It was okay. A solid three and a half stars. And then the last book that I read, that I've read so far in the last couple months, is Donna Emberwild by Sarah E. Ladd. And I rated this a three out of five star. Um, there was nothing wrong with the book. Um, like, it was okay. I feel like there are a couple other people who write in this specific genre that just do it a little more to my taste, I guess. Um, I would definitely try another Sarah Ladd book when the mood hits, but I don't think she's going to be like a favorite author where I grab every book she ever writes. I don't feel like the main characters got enough screen time together, though I did enjoy getting both of their point of views. I love reading from male and female. I like getting the dialogue and being in their head. So I felt like as the bird eye view reader, their story came together, but realistically on the page they were never together so I don't really know how they fell in love. There was like this mystery element that was trying to pull into it which I felt took over the story and there were a lot of twists and turns. There were a couple ones that I wasn't expecting which was nice. So I mean it was a good solid read. It was good. It was written really pretty but I don't know. I just wish it was a little different I guess. I don't know. It was okay. Wasn't awful. Wasn't great. I was excited to read my first Sarah Ladd book and support a fellow Hoosier. Um, so I will try one of her books again. So those are all the books that I've read from January on. I had fun. I've read some good ones. According to Goodreads though, I'm three books behind schedule so I really gotta pick up on the reading. I keep going into like these random moods where I want to read and then I don't and then I want to read and then I don't and I'm in the middle of like four or five books right now so that's fun. I just keep buying them instead of reading them. Uh, my reviews for the ones that were not picked up by my sister will all be on my blog within the month of May. Um, some of them are already published and the rest will go up on Tuesdays and Fridays through the month of May so that's exciting. And then the books from my sister my thoughts are on Goodreads. So you can check all that stuff out. All my links are in the description box below. Let me know what you have read so far. What has been your favorite book that you've read so far this year? And what are you in the middle of reading right now? Right now I'm in the middle of reading Winning the Gentleman by Christiane Hunter. Uh, the Haunting at Bonaventure Circus. I'm going to finish The Love Note by jo Joanna Politano. Joanna Davidson Pol Politano. And I'm reading The Escape by Lisa Harris. I think that's what I'm in the middle of right now. Lots of stuff going on over here. Hopefully I'll be able to finish them all soon. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And I'm excited to start sitting down and talking about the books that I read. And actually giving reviews. And doing all the things. Now I'm just rambling. Alrighty. I think that's it. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>